everybody, welcome back to another video. About two years ago, I posted this video titled, Make a Teddy Bear With Me. In that video, I attempted to make a teddy bear for the very first time, found a brand new pattern that I wanted to try. That whole video is just bringing you along my attempts at making it. That video recently has started to gain a lot of traction because of, I'm assuming, the coronavirus and people being stuck at home so much and wanting to try to do something with all of this extra spare time. So they found my video and they were like, hey, I wanna learn how to make a teddy bear. So that's where I've gotten the requests for people asking me to actually make a walkthrough tutorial of how to make the teddy bear that I made. If you haven't seen that video yet, this is the teddy bear that I made in that video. She is my little Hufflepuff bear because usually I have all of my Hufflepuff Harry Potter related things all over her. She's got a little bow on right now. So I'm going to make this video walking you through exactly how to make a teddy bear just like this, minus the bow. And for the most part, the tutorial that I followed for this, there's a link in that video's description. I will also put a link in this video's description of the pattern because I do not own the pattern. It is a pattern I found on the internet that somebody is very generously giving out for free. But like I said, in that video, this was the very first time I have ever made a teddy bear. My first attempt was a teddy bear I like to call Spud, and he looked like this, meet Spud. This was technically the very, very first teddy bear I ever made. And as you can see, it's pretty simple. So going from this to this, was kind of a massive upgrade. So this video is going to be walking you through step by step how to make that teddy bear. My hope is that I can make it as simple and as easy to understand as possible. This is probably going to be a longer video because I'm going to try to go in as much detail as I can for each step. If at any point throughout the video, something is unclear or I seem to like skip over something, please just ask a question in the comments and I will try to clear it up as best as possible. I'm going to try to be as detailed as possible so that even if you've never made a stuffed animal before, you will hopefully be able to follow along and make this teddy bear. This teddy bear, this is not my pattern. I found this teddy bear's pattern on a blog from the website howjoyful.com. And on there, like I said, there will be a link in the description box this blog is run by a woman named Joy and she has posted a tutorial on her blog with step-by-step -step guide of how to make this bear complete with a free pattern and pictures and written steps. And for the most part, everything is super easy to understand if you just follow that tutorial. But there are a couple steps that are a little confusing and being able to see it live in person, somebody doing it, not just pictures, can sometimes be a little easier to understand. So I'm going to be following that tutorial, sort of trying to help clear up any confusion that the written instructions might have given. Now, I do not know Joy. I have never met her in my life. I have never had any communication with her in my entire life. She has this blog for free and I have had people asking if I could explain it. So if you do, try to make this bear and you go to her blog, please leave a comment and let her know that I sent you and let her know that you are making the bear and you enjoy the bear. Getting into actual details of how to make this bear. The very first thing you are going to need to know is what size bear you are wanting to make and what fabric you are wanting to use. And these kind of go hand in hand because if you have a specific fabric you want to use already on hand, but you don't have a lot of it, you might not be have enough to make this bear. So for this size bear, Joy's blog recommends that you have about a yard and a half of fabric. And the bears that she makes have two different colors on them. So the insides of the ears, this part of the face, and I think these parts of the hands and the bottoms of the feet are all different colors from the rest of the body. So she recommends having one yard for the main color and a half a yard for those accent colors. As you can see, most of my bears are usually just all one solid color because I like that design better, but it's up to you whatever you wanna do. So picking out what kind of fabric you wanna use is very important because some fabrics are much easier to work with than others. For example, I'm gonna, this, guy, this, this little bear is gonna be making an appearance in a, a lot. This bear, I used an old sheet. 
They kept it for scrap material. This bed sheet, it's not stretchy material. It's thin. So I actually, when I made this bear, I wrote on the bear on the wrong side of the fabric, all of the different parts of the material. Like you can actually see on the hand right there and you can see through it. So like this is very much just a scrap practice bear. So ideally you are going to want a fabric that is thick enough that if you are writing on the wrong side to keep things straight, you aren't seeing, it's not bleeding through to the other side which most fabrics you're not gonna have to worry about that with. But you're also going to want a material that is not stretchy because if you are using stretchy material, you are going to have a much harder time getting things lined up as you are sewing them. Things are going to stretch as you are stuffing them and it's not going to look as crisp and clean as it could. And it's just gonna make the whole process more frustrating for you. So for example, I made this bear recently, this out of all sorts of tiny little scrap fabrics that I had in my box. There's all sorts of different types of material in here. Some of them were stretchy already, some of them were not stretchy, and I made it with a little zipper down the back. So you have a little pocket right there that you can put some stuff in. But as you can see, this bear's suffering from a bit of cone head because some of this material is very stretchy and I didn't stabilize it. What I mean by stabilizing is when you have what's called interfacing and you basically iron it on to your material to keep your material from stretching. That is a whole nother topic that I am not going to get into that much. Really, if you are practicing with making this bear, I recommend just using fabric that is not stretchy. If you really want to use a stretchy fabric and you want more details, Comment it, and I will go into more detail in my comments. Skip over that for now. Also, what you have to figure out is the size of the bear that you want. The pattern that is on the blog gives you, if you print it off at 100% size, the size that it pops up as, you will get this sized bear. If you want something a little smaller, you can scale the percentage down to 75%. And at 75%, you're gonna get this sized bear. So you can see the size comparisons. And this one I practiced with doing the opposites. And he doesn't look very good because I was just doing it really quick just because I wanted to see the sizes. So like he's not even completely finished. 75% is significantly smaller than 100%. I did try once making a bear at 50% and I found that it was too small. Some of the small pieces like the ears and the tail and part of the arms were just too small to be working with and I just got frustrated by it and stopped trying to make that bear because it did just make it too tiny. So I really don't recommend going any smaller than the 75% scale. And with this bear, one yard of fabric is really all that you need. I've cut out multiple patterns with this size bear and I bought one yard of fabric and if you're doing everything the same pattern, you aren't going two different patterns, you can get away with like a half a yard. So once you decide what bear you want to make and you know what pattern you want to use, print out the pattern and cut it out. So because I make this bear a fair amount for gifts, I have it laminated actually. And what I have done, I'm going to use this foot as an example, is I cut out the shape of the pattern exactly where it should be. I laminated it and then I cut out about a quarter of an inch further out because you need to allow for a seam allowance. That's what I did because that is easiest for me and that way when I am laying this on the patterns to trace it out, I can trace out with that seam allowance and just cut that out and I don't have to think about adding that amount later or forgetting to add that amount. So once you have all of this cut out and ready to go, then it's time to actually start cutting out your pattern. For the bear that I am making, I really like using like other fabrics that I have on hand to make bears. So I'm going to be using this old smock 
that I have. Another thing you have to keep in mind is if your pattern has a specific direction it needs to go in, like let's say I took this smock that I had that has all these cute little pandas on it and I wanted to cut it out, but I wanted to make sure all of the pandas were right side up. So I didn't have pandas this way and pandas this way and pandas this way all over my bear, but I wanted all of them to be right side up. What you need to do then is make sure you cut out your pattern with that in mind. You have your patterns that you're cutting out and this is where having the text and the logo on the pattern is huge because what Joy and her blog, what she did was incredibly helpful. And if you trace out this pattern with this orientation straight up and down, so you are looking at it, that means when it is on the bear, it is going to be straight and you're not gonna end up with something upside down or crooked. So for example, here is the front of the hand. So you would think cutting it out, it would be cut out like this, but really when you trace it, you wanna trace it like this so that everything lines up up and down. So like if you are doing stripes or something and you want to keep all the stripes going in the same direction. The side of the head piece, this one, it, it might be confusing. You might think you wanna do it like that or something and not really know exactly what direction to put it. This, the text on there, solves that for you. So you just make sure you cut it out or trace it onto your fabric like that. And on a lot of these, you will see that it says to cut two pieces of this fabric, one reverse. And what that means is on all fabric, there is a right side and a wrong side. If we take this smock, the right side is the side you are going to want to actually be showing on the finished bear. And the wrong side is the inside that you are not going to want to see. So you have the right side and the wrong side, the outside and the inside. If your fabric is the same on both sides, cool. You don't have to pay as close attention then. If you have a right side and wrong side, you need to pay attention. What I do when I'm doing this is instead of tracing my pattern like this and then flipping my material over and tracing it again, I just flip the pattern over. So I trace everything on the wrong side of the fabric so I can actually use a pen or a erasable marker or something. And I have my fabric on the wrong side and I just lay everything down, I trace it, I just flip my pattern over, I trace it again, and that's one right side, one wrong side. So you're going to follow those directions on all of the materials to cut out everything that you need. So you're going to have two of most of your patterns cut out. Some you are going to be cutting out four of that specific pattern and some you're only cutting one out. So just pay attention to that and get all of that taken care of. And this is probably the most tedious and least fun part of this whole pattern is just getting everything cut out. So I like to just play some music or an audiobook and just go to town. I have all of them cut and a very important thing to keep in mind. If you are using material that is not a straight yard of material and it has like seams in it and things like that that you need to avoid because you don't want to cut on the seams because then you're just going to have seams in your bear that aren't supposed to be there. You have to avoid all of those and that limits a lot of space. Like I could have put something right here, but I couldn't because of all of that happening. So as a result, if you are wanting to make one of the big bears, make sure you have plenty of space to cut out all the fabric because this is the front and the back of this smock. And this was like an extra large smock. And I used every inch that I possibly could. And I had to resort to flipping it to the front where these pockets are and cut my last bit of fabric out of the front pocket bit because I was running out of space. 
So keep that in mind if you are not like buying fabric to use and you are using a clothing garment of sorts that seems are going to take away a lot of the space that you thought you had. With that, I do have everything on there where it's supposed to be, and now it is time to cut everything out. Once everything's cut out, it should be in a pile like that, and your floor should look something like that. All right, now comes the fun part of actually starting to sew the bear together. I have the blog with the tutorial pulled up. I'm gonna be following that. I will walk you through each step, but if you want any more detail or you're unsure about anything, 100% read through the blog, see what that says. That will probably clear up most of your questions. And if you still have questions, you can leave them in the comments. So starting off, we are sewing together the head. So we are going to start with the ears. So you're gonna grab your fabric that says ear and you are going to line them up. So you have your two pieces with the right sides. So these are the wrong sides. These are the right sides. You're going to put the right sides against each other. So the side that you want on the outside in the end, you're gonna put facing together. So you're gonna do that for all four pieces. So you have two together like that, but all lined up like that. And then you want to sew along this edge of both of them. Do not sew this edge, just this part. And also you're gonna to wanna to be using a thread that is a similar color to the fabric that you're using. It shouldn't be showing anyway, but having the similar color makes it so if there is an area where you can see the thread a little bit, you don't notice it as much. And I am working off of the base that you have, basic understanding of a sewing machine. When you are starting a stitch that you go backwards a few stitches to kind of lock it into place before you continue on. And when you end it, you also lock it into place. I'm operating that you know the basics of a sewing machine. If you don't, I would recommend hunting down some other videos so you can learn those basics and then coming back. All right, so this is what it should look like. So you have the fourth of an inch seam allowance all the way around the outside. Excuse my dirty fingernails. Then once you do this on both of them, you're gonna turn it right side out. There you go, and that's what it's gonna look like. Now, if you haven't been sewing for a while and you aren't really familiar with the type of fabric that you're using, I would recommend pinning these fabrics together so as you're sewing and all of these curves are happening in the different patterns that you're sewing that the material isn't coming apart from each other. I've just done this enough that I don't need to pin a lot of it. There will be places later on that I do pin everything into place, but these earlier stage steps, I really don't, and it works out fine for me. So next, we are going to take our forehead piece, which you should have only cut one of, and the side head pieces, which you should have cut two of, and we are going to be sewing them together. And this is where Hanging on to these patterns to use as references comes in very important because if you will notice on the patterns, you can see there are letters all over these patterns. That's because you need those letters to know where you are connecting them to each other. And without those, some of these steps are going to get really confusing. So you're going to align them together one by one and sew them. So in this next step, I completely forget to add the ears in and I mess it up, but I do eventually realize my mistake and correct it. All right, so we're gonna start with these two pieces. So we are going to flip this over so they are like that and line up this edge to align with each other. It isn't exact, it's, it's fine. And then you're going to sew along that edge and repeat with your other piece on the other side of the forehead piece. Also, I do not claim to be an expert 
at sewing. I am self-taught. I, I don't have it all figured out. So if you're watching this and you see that some things don't align exactly, it's because I'm an amateur. I am not a professional at this. This is a hobby, not a job. So if something doesn't come out perfect, it's, it's just gonna happen. Like, it's okay. I swear I did not plan this foreshadowing. So there's one side and the other side. All right, so now we are sewing the mouthpiece to this piece that we just made. And this is where the first kind of confusing step comes in. I just realized, remember those mistakes I talked about earlier? Those mistakes that are uh, bound to happen? Should have been adding the ears and I uh, forgot. So we're gonna rip some seams. I'll be right back. Okay, so I totally missed adding the ears and I've never done that before. I think I was just getting excited and getting ahead of myself. So when you attach the forehead to the side head, see right here where it says A and A2? That's where you're supposed to attach half of your ear. So see right there where it says A and A2? You add your ear into that bit. Let me demonstrate. So you have your two pieces that are gonna be sewn together. I had to seam rip mine a bit, that's fine. You're going to take your ear piece and lay it. You're gonna put a little less than half of it into there. So you've got about that much that you're putting it on. You're gonna lay it right down so it lines up with that. And then you're gonna fold this piece over on top of that. And then you are going to sew from this corner all the way up to right here so that when you are done sewing it, this is what it should look like. So you have your ear sewn in right there. And you're just gonna do the same thing on this side. So this is what it should look like. So you have your ears hanging out right in there. Now you are ready for the next step. So attaching the mouth to the face is what I would consider the first like tricky step. And this, I do pin this part because it is important to try to get it aligned. And with so many curves and everything that you are trying to sew together, it's very easy for this to get misaligned. Taking the head, you are going to want to make sure that the corner of the mouth here lines up with the corner of the side head right here. If you look on the pattern, you can see that those corners both are marked C. You're also going to want to make sure that up where it says B right here, that that aligns with close to the center, although that doesn't say B. So when it's finished, it's going to be popping out like that kind of. So what I'm going to do to align these, because I want this part right here to try to be as center with that part as possible. So I'm going to start by flipping it over, so right sides are together. And for this, you can't flip it over and do this. You have to actually have it like this, which sounds very confusing, but when you flip it, as all of this gets sewn going that way and that way, it will even out. So when you flip it right side out, it is like that. To go like this, and I start by pinning this middle bit right here so that I know for a fact, no matter which way I'm going around this end, that this is still center. I'm going to put my first pin right there so that stays nice and centered. And then I'm going to just keep going around and pinning these sides together. And you will have to be folding this in all sorts of fun ways to get it where you want it to be. One thing I've found that's kind of easy to do is if I fold this piece over, so the whole thing is like super curved, sometimes it's a little easier for me to line everything up and pin it, rather than trying to keep everything flat on a table when I'm pinning it. Basically, you just want these to align. So lay them in a way that is going to help them do that. And I know this is super, super confusing and I'm sorry, again amateur. And working with like a really intense curves like this can be super challenging and frustrating. 
And again, it's just a matter of going really slow and taking your time and making sure that you are being intentional with everything that you're doing and not just sort of throwing it together and being like, oh, pin, and then when I sew, I'll fix all that because that's not gonna work. I'm sort of like bending the material as I'm working with it to get it to work with me. Okay. So once you have all of that pinned, it should be looking something a little like this. It is not going to be exact, but that is basically how it should look. And now you are going to sew all the way around that. If you did it correctly and took your time, you should not have any wrinkles or anything in your fabric. I do have a little bit on this side. It's not enough, I'm worried about it. But this is basically what it should look like. So that's kind of what you're going for. And next up, you're gonna wanna sew the mouth seam closed. So the mouth seam is this bit right here. So what you're going to want to do is fold it in on itself. So, you know, that's your mouth. And you are going to sew that closed so it connects to wherever your seams ended on this side. Okay, so if I'm showing you from this angle, you have the bear. This is the seam that you wanna sew closed. So you're going to basically fold the whole bear in half and line up where that V meets right there and just line it all up so it looks nice and uniform like that. And then you are going to sew from this bit all the way down to where your stitches are. So because my mouthpiece went farther than the side head pieces, I'm actually going to start on this side so that I can make sure that it connects to that because you want your mouth to be closed. And I'm then going to go and kind of bring it out and then sew off right up here so that it connects. And then once that is sewed, you can flip it right side out and the front of your bear's head is done. All right, so now setting the front of the head aside, we are going to take our two pieces that we cut out for the back head and we are going to sew the center seam together for those. So that is the G going all the way back to this H. You are going to take your two pieces, put them right sides together, line them up all nice and pretty. You look like that. You're gonna take your pattern so you know what sides you're sewing and you're going to sew from this corner all the way down to that corner. Oops, I don't think you could see that at all. So I'm gonna go like this, there we go. This corner, all the way down to this corner. And when you open it up, you have the whole back of your bear's head all done and ready to go. So now you're going to attach the front to the back. And this is where one of the most confusing steps comes in in regards to the ears, because you have to kind of fold them in a really weird way. So what you're gonna wanna do is put the front of your head face up like this, and you're going to want to take the back of the head. You want this center seam to line up with the center of the forehead piece. So that's the first thing you're going to align is you're going to take that, find kind of where the center of it is and pin that right into place. Now, once that is set into place, the next part is these ear placements. What you want to do is you're gonna fold this out a little bit. You want your ear to be folded in like that. So it's laying against the forehead piece and you're going to take this loose part on top and you're gonna fold it down so it lines up with this seam. You're gonna just make sure that it's just right up against there, like so. And you're going to lay this piece down and pin it to it. So once that piece is laid down, you're going to want to make sure that all of this is nice and even. And I will usually put a pin just before the ear and then I pin right through that ear because you wanna make sure that stays in place. And after you do that, you just line up the rest of the front and the back of the head so that you have, it'll all line up right there and you're going to just pin all of that into place as well. There you go. And you're just do the exact same thing on this side. So fold this in, make sure the ear is facing like that and fold it down. Then you're gonna go through 
Take your time to make sure that this lines up well. And then once you have all of that pinned, you are going to sew from this point all the way around to this point. And be careful while you're doing this that you don't accidentally sew something else that it gets bunched up. You don't want that. I'm gonna start right down here and just work my way around. And when you get to the ear, you're gonna wanna slow down a little bit because there are extra fabrics that you're going through. So you wanna just take your time. That really is the key to this whole thing is just take your time, go slow. Be very deliberate about each thing that you do. Your head is sewed together. Now it is time for the moment of truth where you turn it right side out. Ta-da! Teddy bear head. And then you have those adorable ears with the fold in them. Look at how cute that is. All right, the next section that we're gonna be working on is the front of the body. So the first step that we need to do is sew the belly center seam. So we're going to take the two pieces that we cut out for our belly and we are sewing from here down to here. We've got a cute little bear belly. We're gonna set that aside and we are going to take the pieces we cut out for our arm front and this arm front, which is in parentheses, it says the hand, so the front of the arm and the hand, and we are sewing these together for each arm. So we are going to take them and sew these corners, which are P, to these corners, which are O. So for this, I like to make sure I am lining up both the wrong and the right side to each other, because otherwise it can be a little confusing. So these are, these are the ones you want to put together. And you're going to take, we start with these two, these are what you are connecting. So you're going to fold that over and sew from this corner to this corner. Now obviously one of these curves and the other doesn't, so you're gonna to wanna to be deliberate. If you need to pin it, you can. This is a soft enough curve, I am fine not pinning it. So it will look like that when you're done. And once both of the arms are sewed together, we are going to sew the tops of both of the feet together, the legs. So we have our leg top and our leg top foot, and these are being sewn together Q to R. So the exact same thing as the arms, I make sure I am lining up both of the pieces that were cut on the correct side and the opposite side so that everything does end up lining up properly like it's supposed to. And these, unlike the hand pieces where one was a straight line and the other was curved, these should line up exactly with each other. You have the belly, and if you're looking at these pieces to connect the arms, you have E and N and the arm piece is E and N. So that will connect this corner to this corner, this corner to this corner. And just like the mouth, it's going to have to be very slow, deliberate pinning on all of that because this is going to have to be bent quite a bit to get it to fit. So we're gonna do that for both sides and on the legs, you want to be very deliberate with this. This part of the leg, which is your leg top, and that is S and L. And if you look at the bear, you have S and L, meaning L is the outside. Yes, so you just want to make sure that you are lining up these letters. L is the outside, so you wanna make sure L on your legs is on the outside of the bear. So it would be here flipped over, which is a little confusing, but if you look at the actual pattern, it actually lines up pretty well like that. And then you would do the exact same thing with this side and flip that over so that it goes like that. Okay, here is the finished front of the body all done. So now we are going to switch over and work on the back. So the very first thing we're gonna do is sew together our little tail. And sew everything but this part together. So this stays unsewed, and we are sewing all of that together. Turn it right side out, and get a little tail. 
So next you're gonna sew the center seam of the back together, so this piece, and you're gonna make sure that you're sticking your tail in right here between I and J. So then you're gonna switch to the bottom leg pieces and sew those two together. And where you wanna sew those is right here from S down to K. You open it up and it looks like this. So this is the part that your bear is gonna be sitting on. Then we are going to be connecting the legs we just sewed to the back that we sewed. So we're going to lay them together, making sure this center seam lines up, that we are in fact putting the right pieces together. And then you sew from here all the way over to here. And it should look like that. You flip it right side out, and it looks like that. So it just sits right like that. Perfect. And then we are going to grab our pieces that are the arm back, and we are sewing these to the back of the bear. So again, referring to the back piece and the arm piece, we are connecting these from point M to N. So we are connecting this corner of the arm piece to this corner of the back piece. So it'll line up like that. And we sew from there down to here on both sides. And there is the completed back piece to the bear. And now comes the very fun part of connecting this back piece to the entire front piece. All right, so for this, what I like doing is I'll lay down the front piece, I'll lay down the back piece on top of it, keeping the right sides together again. I line up the seam from the belly and the back because you want to keep those centered. And I will put a pin there, although this is the neck and we are not sewing the neck closed. But on this step, there is no such thing as too many pins. So then what I do is I come over here and I line up the hands, just kind of eyeball them together. And this, this seam all the way down here on this far end should line up with each other. So I'm gonna stick a pin down there, and then I'm going to work my way back to the neck. So I'm gonna go around this arm, and I'm gonna be going slow to make sure that things are lining up and I'm not accidentally bunching anywhere. All right, so when you get back to this point, it gets a little bit confusing because you need to look at these patterns because you have this sort of weird little bit right here on the arm. And you also have like this weird little bit on the belly part of your bear. And if you look, you have these E and M right here. And these should line up with each other like that, which sounds really confusing. Basically what you wanna do is if you're looking at it, like this is, this piece right here is the arm back. I take and make sure that this seam lines up with this bit right here. So I line that up and usually that means that that little bit is hanging over, but that's how I get it to fit the best. I don't know if that's necessarily the right way to do it, but that is how it fits its best for me. If there is another way of doing it, I don't necessarily know but that is how I've gotten like the cleanest lines whenever I do this. So I do it that way, that could be wrong. If you have another way of doing it, by all means, let me know because I'm, like I said, I'm still learning. So I'm going to just pin that together. So then that is one whole arm totally pinned. Then I come back down to the side of the bear here and I'm going to these seams right here should line up. So you can pin that and you can continue to work your way down when you get down to the feet. So this is the front foot. This is the back leg. When you get down to here, I come all the way down to where this seam for the leg top or the foot goes and I stop. So I'm going to put a pin right there so I'm gonna stop at that seam so all of this will still be open. 
Okay, so once you have the whole body pinned on the outside, the last bit that you need to pin is here between the legs. So what I do is again, I take this seam and this seam and I line them up so they are together and I pin that. And then same as on the outside of these legs, I line these bits up and stop at this seam right there. Okay, so now the entire bear is pinned together. And what you're going to do now is sew the whole thing together, but you're going to leave the neck open and you're going to leave the bottoms of the feet open. So I've gone through and I've actually put two pins everywhere that I need to stop stitching. So there's two pins on both sides of the feet and by the neck right there. So I am going to get working on sewing this. Usually I will start right here at one side of the neck and I will sew all the way around, come down and stop here. And then I will start here, get that bit. And then I will come back and start back over at this side of the neck and get this whole outside. Once the entire bear is sewn together like this, then it is time to attach the feet to the bottom. Now this step has always confused me a little bit, so what I do... So basically what I do is I take the opening at the foot that you just finished sewing, and I fold it open like this, and I take the foot piece that still needs to be sewn on, and I'm basically going through, I line up the very bottom of it, and then I go all the way around and just pin it like we did with every other curved thing that we needed to pin and sew on this teddy bear. And it's a slow and tedious process, but it works. And for the most part, you don't have any excess material hanging off in any which direction. And then after it's all pinned, you take it to the sewing machine and you sew it all up, making sure that you are not accidentally sewing over any other part of the leg that you shouldn't be. Once those feet are attached and you know that you didn't miss any spots and there are no big wrinkles or anything that you have to go back and fix, now comes probably one of the most fun parts and that's turning your bear right side out. So hopefully you did not accidentally, where, I don't even, there is my neck. It's very confusing at this stage. Hopefully you did not accidentally sew the neck closed because that is what you need to turn the bear right side out. All right, and there is your entire little bear body completely finished. Very cute, very limp right now because obviously there is not any stuffing in it. Now what you want to do is give your entire bear a good looking over. Make sure there are not any areas where you accidentally missed sewing the two pieces together so you have a little hole. Like look at all of your seams and make sure all of them are secure. None of them are coming undone. There isn't anywhere that's so horribly off that it's going to just distort the entire bear and that you have to go through and kind of seam rip a bunch and redo that. So now is when you need to fix any mistakes that you see that you might not have caught earlier. But if everything looks good, then we can go ahead and stuff the body. So what I like to use is I have polyfill and I have a little bit left in this bag. And then I've got a mostly full bag over here. And basically you're just gonna go through and take handfuls, not too massive, but like decent sized handfuls and just start stuffing the bear. And you're going to want to start by making sure that the legs are stuffed well. And then you're, once the legs are nice and stuffed, you're gonna wanna make sure the arms are stuffed well. And then once those are nice and stuffed, then you can move on to the body itself.
So now you have your teddy bear body fully stuffed and ready to be attached to the head. So we are going to set this aside and finish the head piece. Just so you know, that body, I finished what was left in this bag and used about this much of this big bag. So this takes a lot of polyfill. So don't buy one bag thinking you can make multiple of these bears because you would probably be able to get a maximum. I wouldn't do more than two bears per bag of this size because it, it takes a lot of polyfill if you don't want it to be all like floppy. So now we're gonna move on to finish the head before we start stuffing it and attaching it to the rest of the body. So basically this, all of these steps are in my opinion optional. So if you wanted to add any button eyes, you would add those and you can look at the pictures on the tutorial for placement. Um, if you wanted to add a felt nose or anything, now would be the time to do that as well. And Joy on her tutorial has this method for like creating a mouth on the bear, like right here. And I've never done it on any of my bears because I didn't know exactly how to do it and I've never really attempted it. So that's something if you wanna do, you'll have to look at the tutorial and figure it out that way by reading like what she says to do about it because I've never done it on any of my bears. It's cute for sure. I've just, I haven't been able to figure out how to do it myself. I am going to leave this as is, but if, like I said, if you want to add eyes or a nose or make a mouth or anything like that, now would be the time to do it before continuing. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and just stuff this head because I'm not going to add anything to it. However, there is, if you look right down here, underneath the nose, there is this little V right there. And that is supposed to be sewed closed. And I don't actually know what step of the tutorial it says to do that. I don't know if I just miss it every time I'm doing it or if it's written weird and I just misinterpret it every time, I have no idea. But so I'm gonna go ahead and just very quickly, so short little line, boom, boom, right there so that this isn't open because you want that to be closed. I'm gonna sew that really, really quickly together. Then I'm going to stuff the head. All right, so that is all the more I'm going to fill the head right now because I mostly just needed it to be structured so I can sew the head to the body. Now comes the very fun part. Along with cutting out the pattern, tracing the pattern and cutting it out, this is probably the next most tedious part, potentially more tedious, depending on how much experience you have with it. But that is hand sewing the head to the body. Tutorial recommends doing is lining up this back seam to the back of the head right there. And then also doing the same with the front seam right there to the front right here, and then going around and connecting them. I use a ladder stitch to sew this closed. It makes it look nice. You can't see the stitch when it's done. I am still learning how to perfect the ladder stitch. So if you're wanting to know how to do a ladder stitch, you're gonna have to go search at a different video because I do not know it well enough to teach it. So if you don't already know how to do a ladder stitch, go look it up and then come back. All right, so all I have left of the bear to sew is that much of the neck. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to stuff the rest of this and get it like as full as I want it and then I will finish closing up the neck. And that finishes this teddy bear and how to make it. I truly hope that this tutorial has helped you at least a little bit. Most of the comments that I had requesting this teddy bear tutorial were questions about either the legs or the ears. Uh, I think I had one about the arms lining up. I hope that this tutorial helped clear those up. 
I really like this little bear. There's definitely some little things here and there that I wouldn't mind like tweaking, doing it again, but I am still learning. I am not the one that created this pattern. I have said that multiple times in this video. I am simply following a pattern that somebody else has graciously put on the internet for people to use for free. So once again, if you want to make this teddy bear, the link to the blog that has this teddy bear pattern in it is in the description below. Please go check that out and leave Joy, who created that blog, leave her some love. Let her know that you love the pattern and that you are making it. If you make this teddy bear, please let me know because I love seeing people be creative. Let me know if this tutorial helped you at all, if it cleared anything up. If you still have questions about the pattern, look at the written down tutorial on the blog and see if that answers your questions because there are close up pictures to show how to do every single step. And if you still have questions after that, then by all means leave them in the comments and I will do my absolute best to answer them. I hope you've found this tutorial useful. I hope there was something in it that helped clear up some confusion for you. And I hope that now you are able to go and make all sorts of teddy bears as gifts for family and friends and loved ones. Ooh, it'd be really cute to like put magnets in the hands so the bear like magnetizes its hands and it could hold stuff. But that is it for this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it and I will see you in the next video.